Hi there, I'm Bonnie McCaffrey and thank you so much for coming back for another vidcast this month. I'm here with Sue Dennis who is an Australian quilter and she does some pretty neat stuff with leaves. So let's take a look Sue. How are you? I'm great, thank you Bonnie. So tell me about what you got going on here. Um, what I love to do on my travels and these prints are from Australia. I love to collect um, any leaves that I see. I'm very inspired by the natural environment yeah. and so I start printing and often it just all comes together depending on where I am. So are these from so real leaves? They are. They're real leaves. They're from the Currajong tree and I was in a little outback town called Cloncurry oh. and I found these leaves. Yeah. So I've really got um, both sizes printed there and then I was very restricted with my colours. So I could get purple and I could get white and that yeah. was about it. How come? Because this is a little outback town. Oh. So we're not talking big modern city, we're talking Australian outback town. So they and didn't have a lot of paints, is that no, what you mean? No, okay. they only had one patchwork shop and they didn't, they're not really into art quilting there, more traditional style. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get the paints and being restricted sometimes is great because what it makes you do, it makes you work really hard. I agree. It makes, Make, you, it makes you come up with creative solutions. That's right. That's right. So you're working a lot harder. Oh. oh, that's great. So that's some of my work. Really nice. And this down here is uh, what they call the Flinders grass, which is a grass that you see out in Cloncurry. So it's, is it like a long weedy? Yeah, a long weedy, weedy one growing by the side of the road. Yeah, and so you just so paint it and print pop it? Pop it on. Yeah, yeah. this is yeah. direct printing where the paint is applied to the leaf Yeah. and then the leaf is turned over and put onto your fabric and you use a hard rubber brayer. Right to get the print. Oh, that's great. That's a beautiful effect. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. And what's this one? Okay, this is from the Gone Tropo series and it's called Gone Tropo number no. 9 Rainforest Walk. And I've tried to capture the depth that you might see in the shadows of a rainforest. I see that. And we have the rainforests in Australia. So I've printed multiple times becoming lighter with my prints as I've gone right? and even doing the applique first and then printing over the top of the applique to get further depth. What's this quilt back here? Um, that is one of my favourite quilts. It's called a hot land and based on um, the outback scenery that I would see in Australia. Yeah. So flying over, as you're flying over to Mount Isa and Cloncurry region, you would see dried up riverbeds and uh, those scorched hills. Yeah. Not a lot of vegetation. Yeah. So looks, it looks hot. So that's a hand dyed piece of fabric that inspired the design. I do my own hand dyeing. Yeah. And then the hills are created on a soluble base. Wow. Wonderful. So lots of stitching, like kilometres of thread going in there, metallic thread in wow. the top and in the bobbin of the machine. Now I see you have a couple other pieces and these look like a really neat technique and you know being an Australian that mm -hmm. you are, the stone, you know, we think of one of the stones in Australia as the opal and they look like opals. They are, they're opals. Our opals are the national stone of Australia and what I tried to capture, I really love the shifting colour. It's like a yeah. mirage of colour in there so I've tried to capture it with a couple of very simple techniques that I love to do. Which you're going to show us, right? I am, I'm happy to demonstrate. That'd be great. Well let's set up for a demo and we'll be right back. Alright Sue, so what you got going here? Well, Bonnie, what I love to do is um, use the oil sticks to get what I call a glinty bits. That's the technical term. So one way of... That's a technical term? That is. Glinty bits. Glinty bits. All right, glinty bits. So what you have to do first is you have to be a, a fan of Carmen's Muesli. That's my favorite brand because I need the cardboard. <laughs> Okay, the cardboard. <laughs> I wonder if we have that in the States. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to go to Australia to get it. I'm, I've made a rubbing plate. So you need the cardboard as the base, um, some pebbles that you can buy from the hardware, and then put it down with some aqua here glue. Okay, I guess white that's glue. a pretty... That's a, oh, like an Elmer's glue? Probably. Okay. It's a, it's a white PVA glue. Okay. That will hold the pebbles to the Carmen's rubbing plate. Got it. So that one is for the larger glinty bits. Yes. And then if you'd like smaller glinty bits, you can use some coarse sandpaper. Yeah. Okay. So that's quite yeah. rough. For the little glinty bits. For the little glinty bits. Need to have my eyes on. And using the oil stick. Oh, these are great. 
These are great. They have such a nice colors. Beautiful. And, and are you using special colors? Uh, all the iridescence. Love the iridescence, iridescence for the shine. Because the they shine. look like opals. They do. And they'll add to that opalescent effect that we're yeah. after. Very easy to use. It's a oil paint in a solid form. Once you remove some of that skin that keeps it from drying out, you put the rubbing plate on the bottom, the fabric on the top, and it's easy as doing that. Well, look at the glinty bits. Aren't they nice? <laughs> they're great. Do you like those? I do. And we can blend them in as well. Oh, that's now, they're great. the small glinty bits. Moving over now to the large glinty bits. I'm going to use a bit of pink because we have a little bit of pink in that fabric. And it's Bonnie, it's just a fantastic technique. So easy. That is great. And I'm already getting something that looks like opalescent. Opalescent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is great. And now we would heat set that by taking that to our iron using paper top and bottom to get rid of the excess paint and oil. Excellent. So is that all there is to it, to getting the opal look? Is it just a couple of paint sticks? A couple of paint sticks will give you the opal look. And then to enhance ah. further, we've used Angelina fiber. And so how did you get the Angelina fiber to stay there? I stitched that on. Okay. I applique, I do the glinty bits, put fusible web on the opal, and then I applique it using the organic shuffle. Now that is my own. That's another technical term. The organic shuffle and what what is that <laughs> that's the stitch that i use around the edge so i don't get a really hard look yeah it is very it. soft yeah. and i can blend my colors in as well and that's it's a very great. forgiving shuffle and it's so fantastic. this angelina you just put it down and you just stitch over it. you don't melt it or anything no, like that i make it up as a sheet first okay you do melt Angel it first yes yeah yes yeah, yeah. I've got to fuse it first so that um, you get a sheet of angelina and then I position it to um, take advantage of some part of the opal that I might like to highlight. Yeah. Oh, that's and perfect. And that actually looks like an opal. Well, thank you. Pretty neat technique. Thank you. That was a great demo. Now, I love to throw a little curve, and so I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What is your life philosophy? Just enjoy everything that you do. Enjoy I each moment, and um, life is great, especially when you're a quilter. You're so right. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this with me. That was great. Thank you, Bonnie. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. I hope you'll come back next month to see what I have for you then. Thanks for being with me.